It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are continuing the Veralti Lake. Uh, if you haven't watched my little um, Thinking Out Loud video, which uh, if you're going through the playlist of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, it would have been right before this. But if you're just looking at a distant plane, um, it's not going to be before that because that's not specific to a distant plane. If you didn't watch that, I should tell you that I've come to some decisions in terms of the Veralti Lake. Uh, which is where a distant plane comes in. Uh, we left things off in Annie and Abyss. I looked at the last video and it turns out I left it inconclusive. I kind of decided on a Board Game Geek um, the forum thread for that, la or not forum thread, the, the, the comment thread behind that last video, uh, what happened, and it turns out that Pinky won. Now, having played Cuba Libre in a distant plane, I think the rule that I was stuck on uh, ended up getting changed, maybe, or else like clarified so that it would have been a tie, um, which meant Pinky won anyway, so <laughs> that was okay, that was okay. Regardless of whether uh, Andy and Abyss ended up a tie or not, um, the cartel wins on ties, so Pinky would have won. So what we decided, and by we I mean me, decided we were going to do because I got um, Cuba Libre and a distant plane is I'm going to play all the coin games with this Baralti leg, and then the two top scorers, you're going to get scored based on your, your placement. So Pinky in the last game got three points. Um, I think Junior would have gotten second place, so you got two points. And then Sonny got one point for third place, and um, Betty Crocker got zero points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the three-game series, the last, or actually whatever two people have the most points, are going to proceed to the... It's finals of the Baralti leg, but they're like semi semi finals of the whole tournament, so if all that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to get right into it. I don't know how explaining I'm going to be, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's been so long since I've done any um, real people videos for anything other than Star Masters that it's going to be hard to kind of get my head back in the speaking to you game and um, the trying to make sense game. So we'll see how we do. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to, to delve into a distant plane. i got to do it now because um, my coin group wants to be getting to it probably next month, it seems like. Maybe, I don't know, it kind of depends on the rate of scheduling. But after a few more sessions of Cuba Libre, well, I guess then we go to Indian Abyss. So it could be a couple months. But still, better to get it out of the way so that it's off my solo table, which tends to hold things for a long period of time and uh, in the box so it's ready to be played with others when the time comes. So we are all set up and I thought I'd just talk to you a little bit before I get started, before we get started here. First off I want to say I'm not going to go over the rules of this game. Uh, Rocking Horse Dreams has done a nice treatment uh, in his exploration of a distant plane and um, you know if you know Andy and Abyss you know this game pretty well. I, there's, I mean, the basic system is the same. There's a lot of different specifics, though, and this is a very different game from Andy and Abyss in a lot of ways. Uh, for one, like, the game kind of, the crux of it is the relationship between these two players up here. So instead, I'm going to talk about um, how I determine who plays which side. It was it's something I'm still not quite sure if I got it right, but I thought I'd talk about my process because um, color choice is interesting to me. So first off, I you know I was thinking about it today and I was like Betty Crocker should be the Taliban. Why? I don't know. I associate Betty Crocker with the color black for one. Um, I'm not sure if he played black in Shogun or not, but I, I just kind of have this feeling that he should be the black player, and I still kind of feel that way. But um, I think it's a case where my head kind of overruled my heart by moving Sonny to the Taliban. Sonny kind of seems like he would be in the Tea Party today, and I think the Tea Party's role is closest to the Taliban than it is to the other roles uh, on the board. Um, maybe the Warlords, but I no, I think more the Taliban. Um, so the, the other determination I made was I didn't, uh, kind of the meta game. okay? So the meta game is, in this whole series, the players with the the two players with the highest amount of points are going to move on. So I didn't want the players with the highest amount of points to be kind of natural allies. Um, there's a natural alliance here, right? And if that natural alliance is too firm, the game isn't going to be that interesting, 
right? If they're just like, okay, we're just gonna wipe the floor with the other two, one of us could take first, the other one can take second, no big deal. Um, and so, I think I actually did it wrong. Yeah, I did, I did it wrong. So she shouldn't be here. So what I want is the two middle players to be together. So that means Junior should be down here. And maybe I'll put her here and him here. I think I like that. Yeah. So then we have the, the two middle players, Junior and Sonny, on a kind of a, not really a team at all. I mean, these two are much more connected. No one's on a team in this game, though, which is something I have to remind the players that play with me. Um, once they get too cozy, I'm like, you know, only one of you can win. Um, only one of these fellows can win, but two of them can move on. So there's this kind of interesting metagame that could come into play. I hope it doesn't. And I don't think with this group that it will, um, that they'll make some pack play, uh, to try and run it. Because if they do, um, then the other two are going to just team up, right? And so it's going to be like a series of two-on-two -two games, and that's not quite in the spirit of uh, of the coin series. It's really every person, every faction for themselves, except that they also have to work together. So I'm excited to get started on this. Um, I guess I, there's nothing more for me to say. We know who's where. I think everyone kind of fits. His, his motto is live and let live. You know, warlords want things to not be controlled so much, and they're kind of more of a hodgepodge. I like that Pinky represents the US. Um, Betty Crocker, I, he always seems like he's cagey to me, um, and which is why I like the Taliban role for him, because uh, uh, I know they're, they're not so um, Warner Brothers sneaky in real life, but in the game, <laughs> I don't know, it always kind of feels that way, especially in Labyrinth, The War on Terror, uh, which is kind of, I think, this game is closest to that of, of the three. Anyway, I've spoke too much, I've talked too long. Time to get playing. Alright, so I just flipped over the first card of the game and have the first decision to make. And I just thought I'd talk through it just because I feel like talking to you or somebody and no one else is around, so I'm talking to you. It's Prison Break and um, Betty Crocker, Shogun Betty Pro Cro Crocker is up. I have to remind myself to use his title. He earned that title. Uh, we, should, we should refer to him by it. So Shogun Teddy, Betty Crocker is up. So first determination. Although I, I try to counsel the players that I, I, I teach the coin series to to think in terms of operations first, I still um, find myself looking at the event first because it's words and I like reading. Um, but so first thing determination was is the event that interesting to him? Um, maybe actually this one would be, but not as much as an ops plus special activity, and plus um, neither event, you know, although they would target his pieces, are really that much of a concern for Betty Crocker at this point. He's okay with being a corrupt government. He doesn't mind if uh, his people get lost for in exchange for someone else. That's, that's really kind of Pinky's problem in his mind. So the first choice of the game was pretty easy. He went to Ops plus Special Activity. So this game is unique in the real people multi-game solitary mega tournament games that are not some sort of freak hybrid of other games uh, uh, mashed together in that I haven't played it before. I've played other games in the system, but I haven't played this particular one. So I thought it'd be fun if as things occurred to me as to um, the differences between this game and other games in the system. If I, if I talk to you about it, and one thing just occurred to me just now, and that is that police don't seem to be that interesting to the government, uh, which is different than the other games. Like, especially Cuba Libre, police have a lot of um, particular, prob particular um, issues with them. Now, I should say, I read the rule book maybe a month ago or shortly after I got it, and today I just kind of read the, the little blurb in the playbook about what's different between this game and Alien Abyss. So I have, so I could be wrong, but um, just my, my impulse is that police are less valuable to the government. They don't really care about them so much because police is, the police's main role is just um, to get more support and support is not a concern the actual government. It is a concern of the coin, or not the coin, the um, coalition, but not the government. All right, and our first card ends with uh, no use of the event, 
Instead, um, uh, Shogun Betty Crocker, he trained and moved some, some cubes down here to kind of, I don't know, mess with that. And then uh, Junior, he passed. Get, because he's got to he can move first on the next card, which is more attractive to him than moving on the prison break with a in a limited capacity. And then um, Sonny, he rallied here and did some Sharia, which uh, brought it to opposition. He, uh, you know, uh, this was an interesting instance actually where Sonny played differently than I would have. There's lots of instances than this, but. I thought like the fun thing to do would be to use the event to replace this cop with uh, Gria here and get some some thing in Herat. But Sunny, I feel like, is very much about protecting the home front, protecting what you have, building up your your forces. And so he um, he met the 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 government's intrusion into what he considers his territory with uh, with an upswell. Uh, he would have been last on the next card, so passing wasn't really an option for him there. All right, next card is Tajiks. Uh, first was Junior's move. He rallied in Helmond and here, and here everywhere were these, these little white pawns. Um, he, Sonny tried to make a deal with him, or they thought about making a deal, but Sonny is low on money, and so didn't have enough uh, money in order to get Junior to suborn some of these government cubes off the map. Uh, that's kind of Sonny's main priority right now, is to just get them out of his area. Sonny's a very defensive player. Uh, then we move to Pinky, who surprisingly acted on this card. She had first dibs on the next card, but she just, she likes events, I think. And she went with the, the shift, the two non-passion spaces to support. So she got some support for the government, which is um, the coalition's goal, but not the government's goal for people to support them, which is kind of funny. Um, and and that was it. So now we're going to move to the next card, Special Forces and Night Letters. Ooh, Night Letters. I like that. We are going to see a double pass on Special Forces, and the reason why is because of Night Letters, our current two active um, uh, factions are the Shogun Betty Crocker and Sonny of the Taliban. Um, Shogun Betty Crocker has first dibs on this card, but he would like to be able to have a hand in this one. It seems like it's um, going to be, especially this early in the game, this Taliban capabilities, which is a permanent thing for either side. It can either be permanently in favor of Pinky, um, the Shogun Betty Crocker's kind of, kind of ally, or it could be a permanent thing in favor of, I guess, I guess it would kind of help everyone but the government, the, the coin players. So it's in Betty Crocker's interest to at least have some sort of pressure on this card. Uh, and it's definitely in Sonny's interest to be able to play on this card rather than this one. Uh, and also there's kind of a rule of thumb, not always, but you know, if you can, if you can keep your keep control of more cards. Those are, you're, you know, you're going to have control of the next card and also the other players are not going to have control. Whereas if both of these fellows played on this card, then this card, you know, the cartel and the, the coalition would be able to play on this card. And so by, by waiting, they not only get their dollar, but they also force the other people to wait. So the night letters are in play and they are in um, everyone but the the, the coin forces favor in that uh, it's, it's going to limit the, the training capabilities of the government. They train four cubes per space instead of six, which is going to inhibit them for the rest of the game. Um, after that, the uh, uh, Shogun, Betty Crocker, and Pinky, they did a, a one-two punch and eliminated um, quite a lot of the enemy on the map. Not a ton, but I mean, they captured this space. They captured this space. They've kind of gone into there. And how did they do it? Well, first, um, Betty Crocker swept in to three spaces, turned some people up, did some eradication of um, Junior's bases, which helped helped his, his money potential and his patronage. And then it was Pinky's turn. She did an airlift, dropped some, uh, some coalition kind of mentors in, I guess, into here and here from Kabul and then did an assault 
which rid the, those these two spaces of the rest of the pieces. So that's been fun for them. Downside is that uh, the eradication added some opposition to the government, which did not bother Betty Crocker much. But Pinky still worked with him, regardless of the fact that he's turning the people against himself. And Junior responded with this event here. Um, that's going to let him be eligible, and he's going to get second dibs on the next card. So why not do this? A uh, little bit of a, a return hit, uh, especially to the government's resources. They're really hurting now at this point. They're down to two, which is not good for the government at all. Government's supposed to have some money, but they don't have any money uh, because their flashy forces spent all the money being flashy. After the government passed due to lack of funds, um, Junior decided to do the Ops with Special Activity to start to regroup in the north here. That's pretty much where he is. Uh, not a lot going on. Um, the, uh, the Taliban, Sunni's Taliban, is going to pass uh, in order to act on this next card, Operation Iraqi Freedom, which is a pretty potent card uh, in its effects. And then we are at Propaganda next, so that's pretty exciting. Let's see what happens. The end of the campaign prior to patronage saw Sunni's uh, Taliban rallying here and here in Pakistan, and then also over here in Bag Baghes and Nimraz, uh, just to kind of you know, shore up their kind of base here, which is Sunni is something Sunni likes to do. He likes to really focus on his base, and then also he wants to um, just kind of threaten. You know, you can't you can't play as the Taliban or as any guerrilla force without just putting in little pokey things, uh, little threats around the map. You kind of always have to do that, um, regardless of your play, your your preferred play style. Uh, after that, it was the gov or the the coalition's turn. Um, there's really no reason for them not to do something. Oh, uh, Sunny did ops plus no special activity because the the event here could have been bad for the Taliban. Um, there's no reason not to do something because the propaganda card was next. There wasn't really a lot of choices there. You know, they could have patrolled, but why? Um, they could have swept, but why? They could have assaulted, but not really. And so they trained in Kabul, and that was, that was about all they could do. All right, and that's going to do it for the, the campaign and for, I guess, this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Let's take a look at uh, what, how things stand after the propaganda round. Pretty empty Afghanistan. Um, you know, I haven't really, I guess I haven't really studied this game too much. So like, I didn't realize the Taliban was going to have to move back to bases. Um, a lot of government cubes here in Kabul. They didn't put a, a base out anywhere. Uh, so they're kind of just all in Kabul which is fun. Um, looking at our scoring, the the coalition's doing all right. Where is their marker? Yeah, they're close. They're probably the closest right now, uh, partially because they just haven't put out a lot of markers or a lot of um, a lot of pieces on the board, which is good for them. They haven't had any casualties yet, so that's pretty good, pretty nice for Pinky. Uh, yeah, a lot of my recent experiences with Cuba Libre, that makes, it kind of jibes with that, where the government player kind of starts out strong, and then they just have things to lose. Um, the government, they're here. Where do they need to get? They need to get way up here. So, Betty Crocker's still not, not quite doing so well, but part of that is because, you know, their control, they, they lose control if they don't have their piece, if they, if they can't keep their pieces out, and they can't keep their pieces out unless they're police forces. Um, uncontrolled population, that's probably changed, actually. I haven't updated it since I, since I moved people out, so um, Junior's doing better than that. But money-wise, no. Junior needs to be way up here. Everyone, money-wise, has not been doing so hot. We see the Taliban's there. Government's doing, you know, looks to have more, but everything is more expensive for them, so that they're, they're all kind of in this area, really. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. This is the first of, there's six of these cards it's in here. It's seven o'clock. It is? Yeah. Why aren't you wearing pants? I'm 